Linda Turner from Fromagerie Zengari in the kitchen with Amy Longard from Amy Longard Nutrition. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. So excited. I am too. We're going to be making up some great holiday appetizers in a healthy way. Yes, they're definitely going to be healthy and they're perfect for the holidays, which is right around the corner. Yes. So it's a good time to be doing this sort of little cooking demo. It is. And you do cooking demos all the time, Amy. So you're an expert at this. I guess you could say that, yeah. So I do actually do cooking demos a lot throughout Ottawa and I travel around a bit to do cooking demos as well, focus on plant-based foods and teaching people how to add more plants to their diet. Um, so yeah, I do this a lot and people tend to really like it. People love learning how to add more things to their diet, trying new recipes. So today will be a great opportunity to learn three new recipes. Great, with all plant foods. So these are all vegan recipes we're gonna do today and a healthier version of what people would traditionally be eating around the holidays. Exactly, and this is something that is healthier, but it's also delicious. You're not compromising on taste at all, and that's a big thing. Everyone who is transitioning, say, to eating healthier foods, they're worried that they'll miss out on the taste yep. during the holiday seasons, but the great thing about this is that all of these dishes, or all these little appetizers, are extremely tasty, so you won't feel like you're missing out, even though you're eating something healthier. Amazing, I love it. So we're gonna have three different recipes that we're doing today, two savory and one sweet, I think. Mm -hmm. And let's get started with the first one. Tell us what you're gonna make for us. Okay, so for this one, it's going to be um, a mushroom dish with garlic and a little bit of beer, and we're gonna saute it, and we're gonna get that started in just a second, and we're gonna be using the ALA cheddar for that one. Amazing. Is that right, ALA cheddar? Is. Yes. Okay, I say that right, I always mess yes. that up. So we're going to be doing, that's going to be one of our savory ones. We're also going to be doing a balsamic bruschetta. So we've got all the things you need right here. So we have basil, we have our tomatoes. We're also going to add some garlic and our balsamics right here. And then for the sweet version, we're going to be using our double creme with um, pomegranate. We're going to have mint in there. We've got a little bit of maple syrup. So these are very tasty dishes and they're going to showcase three kind of cheeses. So. What I'm going to start off with is just a tiny little bit of olive oil. If you don't cook with oil, it's okay. You can just start with water at the base. So we're just going to warm this oil a little bit. And then we're going so to add in... about a tablespoon or a I teaspoon? I would say about a tablespoon, yeah. Okay. But again, for those of you that don't use oil in your cooking, you're welcome to add water. And we're simply looking to kind of saute and soften up the mushrooms a bit. So these are just uh, brown mushrooms. And Linda, my helper, cut them up for me in advance. So we're ready to go with these job. guys. I think it's a great job. <laughs> so we're just going to add these in because these sort of induction cooktops heat up very fast. So yes. you don't need to wait long for the oil to warm up. So we're going to add in some of our mushrooms already nice, thinly sliced. And so I those are say, cremini mushrooms, right? Yeah, I think they'd be a cremini mushroom or a brown mushroom. You can okay. find them usually in, um, to say, Farm Boy, um, most loblaws, and you can just collect them in. I like doing this for the less waste, so you can now collect the mushrooms in a brown bag rather than buying them in plastic. So that's something I've been kind of trying to do and lots of the grocery stores are offering that now. Well, they keep better in the bag too, don't oh, they? Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I love using that. It's just one way to kind of reduce our waste because we kind of learn the more that we cook, we see how much we end up throwing out. So oh, it's nice true. to have mm -hmm. that. And I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt just to get these going. And what we wanna have them warm up and we wanna also have them release a bit of water. So mushrooms okay. have a really high water count so they will release water as they start to warm up and the salt will kind of help pull that water out. So that's about two cups of mushrooms? Yeah, I would say it's about two cups. Oh, those mushrooms are looking good. They're softening up and it smells really nice right now. Mm. I wish that the viewers could actually smell these mushrooms. They smell so good. So I'm just gonna add in, amazing. they are amazing. Um, I'm gonna add in just a bit of garlic here. I find they give things like a meaty texture. They do. They're kind of like the meat of the vegetarian world, right? right. They've got that that kind of the, the texture. They've got that earthiness. Um, you know, even a little bit of that umami. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, especially shiitakes. By the way, we're not using shiitakes today, but you could have shiitakes. Honestly, you could use whatever mushrooms you have mm -hmm. at home. Um, you don't necessarily need to use these ones. Shiitake would go as well, or maybe a mix of mushrooms. Mm. So we're going to add our, our garlics in there, we have our salt in there, and we've got a lot of nice smoke coming up here. <laughs> so I'm going to add in a little bit of beer. So I'm kind of playing it by ear and seeing how it goes, but this is going to be about, say, half a cup. Mmm, so that is just a lot a really nice flavor, right? Exactly. So we just want to actually kind of infuse the beer flavor into the mushrooms, sort of like your cheese. You've managed to do that. Yes. So we're just going to infuse that in, and we just want to sweat off the liquid 
so we'll have that nice beery taste in our mushrooms. So now we're going to do the second recipe, which is the bruschetta recipe. Yes, yeah, so we've already chopped up the tomatoes. These are ready to go. I use Roma tomatoes. I used about four or five tomatoes, I think. So these are nicely chopped up, as you can see here. And I'm going to put these down for a second so I can grab the finely sliced basil. So mm. we've got about a third of a cup of fresh basil. I'm going to add this in. And the basil just smells so good as well. Oh, yes. We have all these nice smells going on in this kitchen. I'm going to add the rest of the garlic here. So this is a clove or two of garlic. Scoop this out. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. a pinch of salt, a little bit of balsamic. Mm. Is that flavored balsamic? No, nope, just, uh, it's actually just um, regular balsamic, but you could okay. use sort of um, an aged balsamic would be really nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to wing it and just drop a little bit in there. And what you may want to do is try it for flavor for yourself and see what you think. But we just want a little hit of that balsamic flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. It's going to crack in a bit of pepper as well. You cannot forget pepper. No. This pepper. goes so well. And remind me, I'm going to put some in the mushrooms as well. Okay. So don't let me forget to do that. Well, you can put it in there now. Why don't I do that? So we're going to add in some pepper. So you can kind of multitask. Pepper in here, pepper in there. I love it. And I find mushrooms taste so delicious with like, freshly cracked pepper. It just really heightens the flavor. You get a nice hit of pepper there. And garlic. Gar I mean garlic, mushrooms, pepper. Yeah, they go together. It's bound to be delicious. Like peanut butter and jelly. Exactly. So that's what's going in our bruschetta. We're just going to mix that up. Mm. And just smell that. Oh, wow. It smells so good. So good. So now we are basically almost done here because we've got that done. Our mushrooms are almost there. We're just evaporating the rest of the beer. Okay. And we'll be ready to go. So I'm just going to give these another quick stir. I'm gonna crank the heat up a little bit here. So maybe I can spread the cheese onto the bread. Yes, we'll have our Vanna White slash Linda kind of demonstrate the cheese spreading because I know you have a little bit of experience in that department. I know how to spread cheese. Okay. If anyone knows how to spread cheese, it's me. Pretty sure it's you. So. so what we're gonna do is we'll have them in these little rows and we're gonna start with our, I think you have a sundry tomato right there. Yep. So do you wanna just put it on these ones? Yes. Get that started. I'm going to tend to our mushrooms over here. They are just about done. I could just eat these mushrooms as they are. I know. So then okay. we'll get this one, our, our ale-aged cheese, you can put in the second one. Okay. Okay. This beautiful cheese. And you can see, like, when you're making this at home, you can really use whatever you want, though. So don't feel like you have to use the exact cheese that Linda and I are using. If you have just double creme and you want to use that for everything, go ahead and do that. It will work. Or if you have the ale age and you want to use it with the bruschetta, go ahead and do that as well. It's really just, we want to provide you with some ideas on different ways you can use these cheeses. I'm going to give a little mushroom taste test. Mmm. Mmm. So good. So I, now that these are cooked, I'm just going to add in some fresh chives just at the very end. And mm. I'm going to shut this burner off and we're going to layer them onto the crostinis. Just mix that in a bit. The bruschetta on the sun-dried tomato basil one. Exactly. And we're going to pop these in the oven in a second. Once Linda has these all kind of topped up, we're going to pop them in the oven. The oven's already preheated to 350. We're going to toast them up. Just a little quick bake for about mm -hmm. 10 minutes or so. And just to warm them up, crisp them up so the bottoms are nice and toasty, sort of like a crostini. Mm -hmm. uh, now we could have actually made the crostini in advance and then topped the cheese on, but I didn't want them to be too crispy so that when we bite them, they wouldn't break in half. So okay. there's our bruschetta on there. Now, do you want to be my mushroom? Now this is a little bit hot. We'll grab one of your- I have my oven mitts. Your oven mitts. My oven mitt. And we can scoop that on with this guy. Mushrooms on the ale aged cheddar. Look at that color, beautiful. Gorgeous. So there's our number two option. So you can see these are super easy, very, very fast to do. And it's a nice way just to enhance your uh, fromage by just adding on some extra veggies, adding on some extra flavors. 
Now the fromage is very flavorful on its own, but it's always nice to spice it up and do something different. So, and then what we're gonna do is actually leave these ones just on their own. All right, so our crostinis are almost ready. Basically done. So we just took them out of the oven. They're in there, I'd say about 10 minutes or so, just to crisp them up a little. You wanna keep an eye on them so that they don't overcook mm -hmm. and become rock solid. So we would say about 10, 10 minutes or so. Um, what we're gonna do now is actually plate them up. But before we actually get into the, the garnishing and everything, I'll just let you know that the amounts we made, you could make much more than you see here. We're just gonna try a little sampling so that Linda can know how delicious this all is. Oh, it looks delicious so, already. It smells delicious It does already. smell good too. Mm. So what we're gonna do here is just, I'm simply gonna just top off a little bit more chives onto the mushrooms and mm. I might as well put some, why not, on top of our little bruschetta as well, mm -hmm. just for some fresh flavors. And then what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of pomegranate onto our double creme, creme. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of pomegranate onto the double creme. And where do pomegranates come from? Well, they come from a variety of different places we learned because we did a quick Google search, of course. Thanks so God for Google. I know, Google helped us out a lot. So we learned they come from different places in Africa, Southeast Asia, even India, I believe, is where we learned that they had originated and now they do grow in the United States as well. So Amazing. From all over. And this they're time so of year, they're in season. So yeah. you're going to find them at a lot of grocery stores. You can kind of just sprinkle these on or push them in a little bit. But as you can see, it looks kind of nice to have it just kind of tossed over there. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of maple syrup. So if you have a little, something with a kind of a pouring spout or maybe a spoon, just to drizzle over, you don't want too much, just a little bit. Mm. And then we'll put some of this fresh mint on top. Delicious and yeah. so festive. Very festive. Beautiful. Good colors. Your so guests are gonna gobble those up. Yes, I think so. We're gonna actually gobble these all up too. I can so. hardly wait. And there you have it. Three healthy, easy, holiday crostini. Also delicious. Also delicious. Can't forget that. Well, let's try them. Okay, which one are you gonna try first? Well, this one's closest. I'm gonna try the bruschetta one. Okay, I'm gonna try. Toast. Pomegranate. Cheers. Well, thank you, Amy. Delicious. So good. I'm happy to be here because we get to now eat all this stuff. We do. And if you want the recipes, go over to our website. The link to it in the in the description below for all the recipes mm. for these three easy holiday crostinis. Mm -hmm. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you.